It's Accountex 2023. We are live in London. It is day two of one of the world's biggest events. And uh, Martin, there was a lot of energy and buzz yesterday. The show's bigger and better than ever before. It really is. It really is. And I want to see if day two, which is notoriously a quieter day than day one, can just book the trend. And all of a sudden, we see uh, the sort of buzz we saw yesterday again today, which would be great for the speakers who are here today. You know, for day two speakers, I think they have a slightly harder job because they've got to corral maybe a slightly smaller audience into their shows. Um, so it would be great to just book that trend completely and see a, a huge turnout again today. Well, I will definitely drink to that. I'm on brand with our Accounting Influencers podcast. You've got oh, yours yeah. there, Martin. When you talk about footfall at events like these, they stand and fall on not just the number of people, but the quality of people. And when we did our wrap-up of day one, mm -hmm. we got a sense, didn't we, that there were a higher level of people in maybe perhaps a different crowd that it normally attracts, and that was good. A younger crowd, which is wonderful, a more diverse crowd. Some people have never heard of you, if you can believe that. Yeah, it's hard to get to terms with, but I think with therapy I'll get over it in time. <laughs> Um, but still one uh, very consistent factor that we need to wipe out if we can. Still lots of practitioners, and by lots I mean double figures, yeah. talking to me about overwhelm. Stimulus overwhelm, information overwhelm. Where do I start? Who do I talk to? Oh, so much here. And I got to thinking about that yesterday after I got those comments, and I thought to myself, well, if you come here aimlessly, you will struggle with that. And that's why we've got the scorch marks on the floor there with people dragging their bags behind them of all the stuff they're picking up without any real intent there. Mm -hmm. Many times, including on the podcast, Rob, we've talked about coming to our context with an objective, yeah. uh, having a takeaway or a series of takeaways to make the show worthwhile and a yeah. success for you. And, it thought, and I thought to me, you know, I've got a great tip for increasing overwhelm. Okay, if you want even more overwhelm, if you want to be even less focused, I've got a great tip for it. <laughs> okay, let's okay? Hear it. And that is to completely lose your bearings, don't use the map at all, and just simply wander aimlessly, continually carrying bags, more and more bags that Excellent. are weighed down with former trees, yeah. okay, along the floor, okay? That would be perfect. But in the very highly unlikely event that people want less overwhelm, then what my, my major <laughs> tip here is to say, right, I'm interested in payroll, for example. Yeah. I'm gonna go and visit every payroll stand, right. or at least the ones I'm interested in, and I'm gonna to talk to everybody, I'm gonna garner the information that I needed to garner. Then, on my phone, on a notebook, or writing on my head, or whatever, I'm going to draw my conclusions from what I've been told from the stands. Yeah. Maybe I'll even take in a payroll-related talk as well, just to really round out my knowledge. Yeah. Once my conclusions are done, am I finished? Cool, what am I interested in next? Outsourcing? Mm. Okay, I'll go and visit the outsourcing stands, and I'll go and get the information, yeah? And we'll just do that to the show ends. And if people are coming here thinking, I don't have a learning objective, here's my top tip, get one. Yeah. It's reminding me of the story that came out, I first saw it in Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's the story from Abraham Lincoln, and he told the story of if I had to chop down as many trees as possible for four hours, I would spend the first hour sharpening the axe. Right. And my networking tip for something like this, which you're right, it's sensory overload. Yes. Audio, visual, everything, is to come in with the brochure, with all yep. the stands yep. and the talks and everything else, and sit down and have a cup of coffee. Yep. There's plenty of places to do that here. Yep. Even our stand is, I've got a couple of sofas. And do exactly that. What if I sit here at the end of the day and ask myself, has it been a really good day? What would need to have happened? So you define an objective, a goal. Yes. Somewhere you want to be, something you want to know more about, somebody you want to talk to. And if you get that done, everything else is gravy. It's an interesting point. You don't go on holiday, do you, to Paris and sit down and go, let's just keep walking, see what happens. Mm. You sit down and go, okay, Eiffel Tower first of all, Champs Elysees next, yeah. Arc de Triomphe after an that, itinerary, don't you? and you work it all out. And yeah. right, well, then we need to go to Louvre after that, and if I've got time, we'll head out to Versailles, and and that's what you do. And then you go and do those places, so that when you come home, all your holiday stops are of all the famous landmarks. Yeah. You don't go to Paris, go to Boulevard Hausmann, and go, all right, let's turn left and see where it goes. But how often do we see it though? As you said, people wander around with glazed eyes, yeah. and in the first hour, they're overloaded. I, and they're not sure where to turn, so it's just done on a whim. And if they bump into somebody, great. Six bags and a coat was the record I saw yesterday. Oh, a lady wow. with th three bags one shoulder, three bags the other shoulder, wow. and a coat threaded through them. 
Uh, maybe she was doing it for balance, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we had good footfall yesterday. Yep, uh, Ex well, I think we had excellent footfall yesterday. Yeah, you mentioned perhaps it might be a little bit lower. I'm secretly thinking it might be a little bit higher because we've got a lot of registrations for the show, a yes. record number, Yes. and they've got to arrive on one day or the other. I mean, there'll be a few people that don't show up, sure. but the stands, the vendors, the speakers are secretly hoping that everything's as full today as it was yesterday. Do you know what? We were hoping to have some official numbers today. Here's what I can tell you. I spoke to the production office yesterday, and it's a record number of registrations wow. for the show. Yeah. Were those registrations to turn into attendees at the normal conversion rate, yeah. it would break the record. But what I couldn't get for this morning was yesterday's numbers of actual attendees. It felt very, very busy. We've got a 20% bigger show, so I'm going to assume that because it felt very busy and it's a bigger show that we got more than usual uh, so i'm expecting a big number to come from the production office but um we'll see what happens today do we know what the record is is that in the public domain i it isn't in the public domain oh. i do happen to know it whether i can recall <laughs> it immediately on the spot i don't know well, but it's it not in the public domain then. it's not in the public domain but <laughs> let's let's say it's more than eight thousand and less than 10. got it well that's what makes this show one of the biggest in the world of its kind it's agnostic absolutely. everyone here can play absolutely in the same sandpit and Depending on how good your stand is, how good your product and offering is, how good your people are, you will do well here. Oh, you will do very well here. And what's interesting me is uh, one of the new names here this year is Pulse. Um, and again, one thing that impresses me about Pulse is how keen they are to understand their customers. Mm. Uh, you know, so for you guys watching this as accounting practitioners, that's you. And I was very impressed with how keen they are to know everything there is to know about the profession. I spoke to them on the way in this, this morning, asked them how the day had gone yesterday. They said not only did we get a huge number of leads, they were quality leads. And that's where I think this is why Accountix is as big as it is. Mm -hmm. You're not just getting leads, because anybody can get that, you're getting quality leads. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, another company that you know, Martin Hammock. You talk about why the show is 20% bigger. Yep. Hammock had a stand here last year, which is very small. Yes. And you're looking at their I'm stand I'm staring right at the Hammock now. stand right there outside. And, it's huge. Uh, uh, Hammock do a specialist landlord uh, products and services for accountants to serve their clients. And uh, they're unique in their game and yes. very, very good. But how they have grown and how they've embraced Accountix to say, look, this is what we did last year. Yep. Let's go bigger this year. And we can make the business case for that. Yep. And very clever how they've done their stand as a journey. Oh, very, yes. With I mean, two uh, sides of it, and you walk through. Again, I'm, I'm staring at it as, as guys, it's not on camera, but out there, yeah. it's, it's, it's right in front of me. The counting platform for landlords is the little strap line, which is nice and simple. It's, a, it's like a light show. It's like Blackpool. Have you ever been to Blackpool? It's like Blackpool. Um, but you're, Rob's absolutely right. It is, I can see from here, it is a journey that you go through different seg segments on a sort of an, an education process. And given their stand last year, as you say, that's an enormous evolution. Well, you, you see people that want to exhibit the next year, but they want a different stand. I was just talking to Sophie Lowe at Virtual Cabinet. She mm. said, we're doing well this year, but we want to go bigger next year. That either takes up someone else's stand or it takes up more floor space. So do you see the show growing? Oh, I do. And next year's dates have already been announced. Right. So I believe, I hope I don't get, I hope I don't get this wrong. I think it's 15, 16 in May next year. Right. Um, but 24 is already announced. And talking to the, again to the production office, Accountex 2024 from the production office's point of view yeah. starts tomorrow. Yeah. And Martin, finally, let's look ahead to today. Mm -hmm. You're, you've got a busy day. You're introducing a couple of speakers, running some sessions, going to a couple of stands. What are you most excited about? What am I most excited about? I think I'm probably most excited um, about Mark. Um, Mark Pugh, this Mark, is. Mark Pugh, yes. So Tell I, the audience who Mark Pugh is. So Mark Pugh is a Premier League, or I should say a retired Premier League footballer who has a real passion to help people overcome the obstacles in their lives, whether they're professional or personal. Um, he's got a talk today called Achieving a Premier League Mindset that I have the pleasure of introducing. And when you find out this story, you'll find out it's not just a case of, I played football very well on a big team sign and I got a lot of money. That's not the story. The story is setback after setback, after contract re uh, renewal, after contract withdrawal, after manager change, Being after injury. Go being let go over and over again he was blocked and he had to develop 10 very specific traits to get to the Premier League mindset traits mm. and he's going to reveal all of those in his talk at 2 o'clock did he get further in his football career than you did at Hibernian marginally absolutely marginally he made the Premier League I made the changing room. Yes. Well, I'm most looking forward to today. I'm chairing a panel in Theatre 8, one of the big theatres, uh, on women in accounting. We're talking to three very influential female leaders in the accounting profession, Caroline Plummer, Gravita, 
Julia Penny, head of the ICAW, Institute of Chartered Accountants England and Wales, and Natasha Frangos, one of the senior uh, partners over at Hayes McIntyre, which is a top 20 UK firm. And we're going to be talking about diversity and inclusion yep. and women in accounting and yep. wokeness and all of the things there in, in what traditionally has been a male dominated environment. Very much so. I had uh, the pleasure of having breakfast in the hotel this morning with a couple of the team from Intuit uh, on their social media side. And they were asking me about the... Well, they're a bit younger than you, Martin. Uh, I think six months and nine months younger than me. <laughs> uh, and they, we, had this, we had this conversation. Oh, sorry, 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 I'll start again. 18 years and six months and 18 years and nine months Sounds younger than me. Sounds about right, yeah. yeah. And we were having this conversation. They were asking me about the context of old. They said, has it changed much? Has it evolved much? Goodness. And I was like, Where do you start with that? Yeah, I was going to say, you wouldn't believe how it used to be. Um, and even uh, I was talking to Carl Reader um, this morning. And Carl was at the very first account X. And when he looks back at the footage, he's the only guy in a Stone Island sweatshirt. Everybody else is dressed like a hotel manager the like good me. Good old days. So much has changed. Yeah. The audience has changed. Attitudes have changed. Um, the constitution, the makeup of our audience has changed. It's pretty much all changed. Well, so it should. The profession is evolving. Absolutely. And the industry, the fintech software industry that serves it is changing. Yeah. Technology is changing. Uh, the, the economic environment is changing. Uh, the absolutely. people are changing. The new generations are coming in. So it's right that it evolves. Uh, absolutely right. And uh, for, for me there, the, the one thing that wasn't on that list was the service lines are evolving as well. Yes. And what an accountant can bring to a business mm. um, is a stage maybe two stages on from where it was when I started. Yeah. Well, that is our wrap-up for the, not a wrap-up in fact, but an introduction to day two here at Accountex London 2023. We're going to be tuning in with live interviews throughout the day and we'll do a wrap-up at the end of the day. Look also for our swag off. That's where we'll bring Andy North from TaxCalc and Zoe Lacey Cooper in to do a broadcast here where we'll be looking at the swag and what's gone on on the stands and the kind of things they've doing. And we all love a bit of swag, don't we, Martin? Most of us love a bit of swag, most yeah. Of most of us love a bit of swag, for sure, yes. It's gimmicky, we know that, but there's some very imaginative ideas, and Zoe and Andy will be talking through those, so you'll be able to check out that. We'll do a wrap-up at the end of the day, uh, but for now, over to these messages, and we'll see you later.